So good morning, everybody. I'd like to get started. Uh, this is the uh, UVITIS Division's presentation, uh, case presentations. We thought that we would uh, try to present uh, kind of an overview of pediatric uveitis. Um, and uh, what I will do is provide some uh, background information uh, and an intro introduction and some new developments, and then try to illustrate some of these uh, with case presentations by my, my colleagues. So pediatric uveitis, definitely not kid stuff, the good, the bad, the ugly, and the potentially horrible. Um, pediatric uveitis scares everybody because it's, because it's in kids. It is a subject that I think deserves uh, special attention because of the unique diagnostic management issues and therapeutic dilemmas inherent in this population. A history and review of systems and a complete examination can be really difficult to obtain in a uh, preverbal child. The diagnosis uh, varies with age, uh, with an overrepresentation of infectious etiologies, pediatric specific masquerade syndromes such as retinoblastoma and leukemia, unique endogenous syndromes such as JA associated iridocyclitis and Kawasaki's disease, and atypical presentations of familiar diseases in adults such as um, uh, sarcoidosis. This, uh, in turn, affects the uh, interpretation and choice of laboratory tests. Uh, disease is chronic, recurrent, and insidious, with a frequent development of structural complications. Presentation with established pathology or structural complications is, in and of itself, a risk for the development of further complications, um, and is a really graphic manifestation of the diagnostic delay and screen failure in this population. Finally, there is the uh, unique risk of amblyopia, which heavily influences um, uh, therapeutic and, and surgical decision making. Just to give you an idea, um, pediatric uveitis is about fourfold uh, less uh, common than in adults, but it can represent up to a third of the patients that you see in a tertiary care uh, setting, representing about 20,000 children with uveitis in the United States. There have been some definitive shifts in uh, the uh, anatomic distribution of uveitis in the past decade with an increase in the, in, in the number of pan-uveitis and intermediate uveitis you, due, thought, thought to be due to uh, better diagnosis and treatment of toxoplasmosis and toxicoriasis. There is um, obviously referral bias and uh, depend, depends on geography. Uh, Population-based studies show a predominance of anterior uveitis, but you know, at the Moran Eye Center, we see a lot of intermediate posterior uveitis. Um, in, the, in the largest um, epidemiologic study in the United States, um, anterior, anterior idiopathic uveitis is most common uh, at the NEI, and followed by the most common being uh, juvenile idiopathic associated uracyclitis. But if you look around the world, there is a overrepresentation and much higher incidence of infectious uveitis in India and in Colombia. Um, social complications uh, such as cataract, macular edema, hypotonia, epiretinal membrane, and glaucoma are, are out, and poor visual outcomes are related to the anatomic location, the type of uveitis, and timely referral, with uh, poorer prognoses being seen in patients with infectious etiologies, posterior and pan uveitis. Visual impairment and severe visual loss is not uncommon, uh, with uh, blindness resulting in up to a third of patients uh, in. Uh, in Colombia. So the differential diagnosis, uh, infectious uh, disease just as in adults, the most common anterior infectious UBS would be herpetic diseases. However, we do see some unusual things such as bilateral simultaneous uh, uveitis, which we see in patients with post-infectious disease such as uh, after streptococcal infection or in a non-infectious entity known as uh, TINU, tubular interstitial nephritis and uveitis syndrome. The most common infectious etiology in children is toxoplasmosis, as it is in adults. Again, uh, to underline uh, the fact of non-infectious uveitis, JIA-associated iridocyclitis is the most common uh, systemic association uh, in children. But then again, there are these unusual syndromes, such as Kawasaki's disease, early onset of sarcoidosis, and uh, Blau syndrome. One must not forget the fact that in kids, there can be uveitic masquerade, such as um, retinoblastoma presenting as a uh, hypopion and uh, leukemic infiltration. Therapeutic dilemmas surround the use of corticosteroids uh, for concerns uh, in inducing structural complications such as cataract and ocular hypertension and the use of systemic steroids in inducing growth retardation. 
versus therapeutic timidity with the use of th uh, non steroidal immunomodulation for fear of toxicity um, uh, associated with these medications. As we know, kids represent greater surgical risk. Uh, they have more exuberant inflammatory response to surgical trauma, plus there are inherent complications associated with certain dis disease diagnoses such as JA-associated urocyclitis. So the therapeutic pr approach, as in adults, is to eliminate active inflammation by any means possible with the appropriate administration of antimicrobial therapy in the cases of uh, infectious diseases, and then a stepladder approach using steroids by all routes necessary in order to put out the fire, um, and then the early implementation of steroid sparing immunomodulatory therapy in the cases of non-infectious chronic diseases, and in some cases, the use of diagnosis, diagnostic and therapeutic vitrectomy. So we can divide uh, ther uh, immunomodulatory therapy into conventional and biological treatment. Conventional treatment uh, can be su further subdivided into the anti-metabolites, the T-cell transduction inhibitors, and the alkylating agents. By far, we use the, uh, the um, anti-metabolites most frequently, including methotrexate and mycophenolate, mofetol, sometimes with cyclosporin as an add-on therapy, and much less commonly these days are outletting agents used because of the real toxicity associated with these agents and better alternatives in biological agents. Methotrexate by far is the, is the most common first-line agent in both pediatric and uh, uh, JA-associated iridocyclitis, um, having uh, inflammatory control in about three-quarters of the patient and a steering sparing effect. But that means that there are about a quarter of patients that don't. So um, uh, one one has a better chance of inducing remission uh, in patients with methotrexate with longer periods of disease inactivity on medication, with longer periods of time on medication, with uh, up to three years in one study by, uh, in, in the Netherlands. Biological response modifiers, by definition, are therapeutic proteins um, that serve as antagonists to immunoactive molecules, such as, rec uh, such as uh, uh, recombinant antibodies, uh, that block cytokines or receptors or cell surface proteins. The idea, of course, being more specific and targeted therapy uh, and to decrease side effects. The TNF inhibitors are the ones that are most commonly uh, familiar with people and associated with treatment. Um, they are listed here, tanercept, infliximab, and adalimumab. Tanercept is uh, great uh, for arthritis, but is really not useful in patients with, uh, with iridocyclitis. Infliximab is a chimeric monoclonal antibody, a mouse-human combination, uh, and adalimumab is a humanized monoclonal antibody that can be administered subcutaneously, whereas infliximab must be administered uh, intravenously. They both bind membrane-bound and soluble TNF-alpha. Uh, these two agents have been um, uh, recommended by an expert panel uh, to be first-line agents in patients with Bechet's disease, and then second-line agents in children with JA-associated urocyclitis. Just to give you an idea about infliximab, um, it, it shows consistent and sustained reduction of intraocular inflammation, usually at higher doses um, and at shorter infusion intervals that is used in rheumatology, and allows systemic uh, taper of IMT and is steroid sparing. The, the problem, not the problem with this, but the one of the things that one must be aware of is that it's usually used in combination with um, an anti-metabolite such as methotrexate in order to prevent uh, the formation of anti-chimeric antibodies, which may reduce the efficacy of the medication. One must also know that it's non-remittive non and uh, its efficacy may vary in time. Adalimumab, uh, or Humira, uh, is an effective treatment option to patients uh, that fail methotrexate. Um, it, it advantages is that it's humanized, uh, it's less immunogenic, uh, it allows subcutaneous dosing every two weeks, and it is FDA approved for adults for the uh, for non-infectious inch, uh, intermediate posterior and pan uveitis, and has been more recently approved for similar indications for pediatric uveitis. I want to draw your attention to the Sycamore trial, which was concluded a, a year ago and concluded early, which was a randomized controlled trial of the clinical effectiveness and uh, cost effectiveness of adalimumab plus methotrexate versus methotrexate alone in a large cohort of patients with JIA, it was uveitis. 
it showed that there was a definitive advantage in terms of efficacy and time to treatment failure for the combination of drugs rather than either drug alone, which really supports the common practice of using these drugs in combination in clinical practice. Um, one must also know that th these are not magic bullets, that there is variable response to anti-TNF therapy. There are non-responders with a waning response and treatment-related side effects, which may uh, preclude their use. So the options that one has is to use an alternative agent in the same class. So um, if one is not responding to Humira, infliximab may be a good choice because you can vary the dose and the frequency. Um, there are other agents in the same class, such as golumumab. And then there are third-line biologic agents for which there is some experience in uh, uveitis, such as um, Orencia, rituximab, anakinra, teclizumab, and um, uh, actemra, or tocilizumab. I just want to let you know that um, golumumab is an uh, anti-TNF uh, agent that can be administrated, uh, administered monthly. Um, and has been shown to be effective in JIA um, to, in patients that are refractory to other biologic agents. Similarly, rituximab, which has a different mechanism of action, which is an anti-B cell uh, mouse human uh, monoclonal antibody, has been similarly effective, effective in at least two studies in patients with refractory JIA-associated uveitis. On the other hand, abatacept or rencia uh, initially was thought to be helpful in this population of patients, but in larger case studies, has been shown to be pretty much a coin toss in terms of efficacy. Um, there are a whole slew of other biologic agents for which there's little experience in, in uveitis, but there's one a promising agent, act Actemra or tocilizumab, which has been shown to be actually quite effective as a third-line agent, both in terms of anti-inflammatory efficacy and actually in the reduction of macular edema. So what about the um, outcomes? Well, there are some Pretty, pretty good retrospective data, which shows um, a reduced risk of ocular complications in patients with JA associated urocyclitis, such as reduction of hypotony, epiretinal membrane formation, and blindness in the better seeing eye, with an 86% improved um, or stabilization of uh, vision with effective immunomodulation in another study. But this result was achieved only with early implementation of this uh, medication. And then in the site cohort, which was the largest retrospective uh, cohort of five very large uveitis practices in the United States, there was a 60% reduction in the risk of visual loss, particularly for the uh, 2050 level. So modifying the prognosis in this uh, very fragile group of uh, patients will re require effective immunosuppression uh, and early treatment of intraocular inflammation with the early introduction of intra uh, IMT therapy. And then I think the identifi identification of eyes that are really at risk for complications of visual loss. So this would include surrogates of um, disease severity, such as presentation with, uh, with ocular pathology, and then new modalities that are coming to the fore, uh, such as laser flare uh, photometry and OCT evaluation of uh, anterior segment flare itself. And then I think that there is a call for the reassessment of screening guidelines uh, for patients with with iridocyclitis and vigil vigilant uh, post marketing surveillance um, and randomized controlled clinical trials for uh, for patients uh, that are undergoing immunomodulatory therapy. So I would like to hand it over to Dr. Laura Shell, who, uh, who will present as an unusual case, and um, uh, my colleagues who will try to illustrate some of these points. Thank you. So, <clears throat> Al, question. Uh, with the move to these immunomodulators that we're talking about, is there safety profile such you feel comfortable utilizing them without co-managing with rheumatology? Or do you f still feel that you need co-management with uh, rheumatology with these? So for children, we co-manage them with rheumatology. I, I think that we are capable of actually, in adults, we manage uh, immunomodulatory therapy, including biologic agents here by ourselves. But one of the reasons we manage, co-manage them, because a large, a large number of these patients have systemic disease. Sure, sure. And so I think that it makes a lot of sense to have that, um, have that uh, not backup, but that good medical care. And we have a really hand-in-glove collaboration with pediatric rheumatology. Um, we do have good collaboration with adult rheumatology, but there is less enthusiasm, actually, to treat patients with, for example, non-rheumatologic indications that have uh, ocular disease. 
So we had Plus, it's hard to get into. I mean, the right. whole institution talks about how hard it is to get to rheumatology. I don't yeah, I, I think, you know, the best There's care a shortage of, of, of children with, with these diseases is really a, a, a collaborative effort with pediatric rheumatology, particularly those children that have uh, rheumatologic disease. Thank you.